Leslie Riddle was a musician from Burnsville, North Carolina. He was a guitarist who was a finger picker. He also played the mandolin. And he's known in musical history as sort of a conduit for the formation of country music as we know it today. He's most well known for his relationship with Alvin Pleasant Carter, A.P. Carter, uh, because he and A.P. would travel around together and collect songs for A.P.'s recording group, The Carter Family. Leslie and A.P. met in Kingsport, Tennessee. Actually, Leslie was good friends with Brownie McGee, the, the great blues singer, sort of in an earlier period before Brownie McGee started working with Blind Boy Fuller and, and Sonny Terry. At that time, there was a, a little community of musicians that were hanging around, and A.P., I think, in the course of his travels, he went to the mountains as well as went to Kingsport, Tennessee, where there was a strong black community, trying to bring in some of the sounds of the African-American community in its own type of way for the Carter family. Here in Kingsport, there was, uh, in the 1920s and 30s, there was actually a fairly robust blues movement here in the area, and he was at the forefront of that. He was really good friends with Stephen Tarter of Tarter and Gay and played numerous shows with them. He had had an injury, an industrial injury, so his way of, of making income after that injury was his, his uh, music. A 14-year-old, Leslie Riddle, lost his leg at a cement factory accident in Kingsport in 1922. Unfortunately, that would not be his only loss. Two years later, he would lose several fingers in a shootout with a family member. AP asked around, and he was directed to the house of John Henry Lyons. It was the hangout house where all the musicians gathered when they weren't doing shows, and Leslie was sitting on the front porch with the other musicians, and up pops AP Carter. He was actually talking to John Henry Lyons. I understand you know a lot of the local musicians, and can you help me? And he's like, well, he can help you. So that was kind of the introduction of Leslie Riddle and A.P. Carter there on, on the steps of John Henry's house. So they used Leslie Riddle because he was so well known in the community as a musician that all the African American communities here in Virginia and in North Carolina and Tennessee and in, in this part of the mountains, he was, he was a known commodity. So if he showed up and brought A.P. Carter, it's like, okay, this guy must be legit because he's with Leslie. So when we talk about song catching in this area, um, the interesting one for me especially is A.P. Carter and Leslie Riddle. Um, A.P. Carter, of course, from the Carter family, he was known as someone who went out song catching and he did that. I mean, he, he was always known to wander and go for days at a time sometimes, going out to neighbors and friends and family, hearing about a person who sang an interesting song down in this part of the the region or someone who was in this city singing these songs and he would go and ask people to sing for him. Um, Leslie Riddle was with him. Leslie Riddle called himself his, called himself A.P. Carter's tape recorder because he was so good at remembering the songs. They went out on about 15 trips together. He also lived with the Carters a couple of years as well, traveling around with A.P. In the course of their traveling, uh, Leslie also uh, taught a little bit of his guitar style to AP's sister-in-law, Maybell Carter, and she developed her own style of guitar called the Carter Scratch, uh, known nowadays where you're playing the bass notes as well as the high notes on the guitar, mimicking the sound of two guitars playing at one time. And how that uh, connects with Leslie is Mike Seeger, the great uh, uh, traditional music advocate, he uh, started working with Maybell Carter in the early 1960s, um, working with the New Lost City Ramblers and uh, Maybell Carter. They, they used to do duo gigs together. In the course of their traveling together, Mike had asked Maybell about her guitar style because up to that point, Mike was one of the advocates that really set into motion that the Carter Scratch is one of the foundations of country music and popular music as we know it. And of course in the 1960s folk revival, the, Carter, the original Carter family's recordings were the foundational backbone of the entire repertoire. And so when he asked her about her style, she mentioned Leslie Riddle. So Mike being the sort of advocate he was, he just jumped in his uh, VW Bug and drove down and met with Leslie. It took a little bit to convince Leslie that uh, you know, he was a good guy to talk to. And slowly and steadily, he, 
he created a relationship with Leslie, which included doing a couple of recording sessions with him. Uh, Micah featured him on his album, Second Annual Farewell Reunion, which is a, a great record that he put out in the 70s, and he has a, a track with Leslie on there. And then also he made a, a series of recordings which were put out in the early 1990s on Rounder Records. And so you get to hear Leslie Riddle actually playing. One of the things that's distinctive to me about hearing Leslie compared to hearing the Carter family's version of the same songs is that Leslie's guitar style is deeply rooted in North Carolina Piedmont tradition, while Mabel Carter's picking style reflects more of the Virginia traditions that she came from along with her um, sister-in-law Sarah playing the auto harp. It, the guitar style kind of takes more of the quality of the auto harp and guitar style duo format compared to being a self-contained guitar style like uh, Leslie Riddle style. So it's very much a testament of both musicians' artistry in its own type of way. Almost like looking at two, uh, two sides of the same coin. AP himself mentioned that Leslie was almost like his human jukebox who would remember the melodies because AP would spend all the time writing the words down to all the songs and reformatting them into songs that were easy to copyright as new songs even though they might be from older materials but Leslie would remember the melodies and would go back and teach the Carter family the melodies of the songs that they collected. When you start working with people in a collaborative manner in that way if someone takes a claim of it wholesale there's you know, it's kind of a hindsight's 2020, but there's no way to really differentiate what these are Leslie's parts or these are AP's parts, except for the recordings we have where Leslie explains which songs he happened to, to teach to the Carter family. One of his signature numbers was literally the Cannonball, which was a big hit for the Carter family as well. So to know that the Carter family are open and interested in recording songs that are part of the African-American community in general opens up a new conversation of their repertoire. Because usually the Carter family is, are, is placed into sort of the uh, Southern Gospel sort of bracket where it's a much more Anglo-centric uh, frame of reference. But to know that they did songs by Leslie Riddle, they did another song called Jealous Hearted Me, which was also recorded by Ma Rainey, for example. It gives a better sense of what type of material they were interested in a certain period of time because it's almost like a middle period when they start recording Leslie Riddle's song. So it's, it also reflects the timeline of what the Carter family are working with. They presented songs that were a part of these very specific communities and through their recordings they created a legacy of, of songs that uh, were easy to copyright and could be covered by you know any number of people because that's one other way to look at Leslie Riddle's influence is once the Carter family made their recordings and had their popularity, going into the 1940s and to the 1950s, the Carter family's songs were again reinvigorated by honky-tonk country singers who performed a lot of their songs, as well as the 1960s folk revival where a lot of musicians were playing their songs again. But at that point, they were just known as the standards of country music. So in a way, Leslie Riddle's contributions are creating the foundation of country music, even though it might be right under the level of perception. Mostly Leslie Riddle, he went, just went back to work and he was a working guy working in a factory and, and uh, he, he didn't really have aspirations for his music. And one thing that I found was interesting was uh, Mike Seeger told me that as he knew Mike, he began to appreciate his musical legacy personally a lot more than he did at the time. So it was something that was sort of relegated to his past back before he had joined the church and a different era of his life. So he didn't really revisit that period of his life at all. And so Mike told me as he got to know him, he then began to reassess his life in a whole other type of way when it came to this music. But because before it was just the stuff I did before I, I was on the right path, you know. Uh, having uh, met a couple of people who knew Leslie, he wasn't necessarily a person who tried to bring attention to himself, which is uh, something a lot of um, 
working class people tend to do. They don't like to bring a lot of attention to themselves personally. And that's something that I heard in passing from one of his uh, niece's brothers and brother-in-law who, who knew him very well mentioned that he was a, a very uh, private man and he didn't like to really spend a lot of time talking to strangers or people he didn't know. The long-lasting legacy of uh, Leslie Riddle's music on American music in general is that the Carter family became one of the foundational artists of country music in a general sense. So when we think of the very first chapter of country music, we think of the Carter family, or we might say Jimmy Rogers. In other cases, we might mention Fiddlin' John Carson. All of these musicians were white musicians, but to know that there were African-American musicians that were a part of their communities and to know that they spent time with them, either learned songs or traded songs with them, is a very powerful statement to Southern uh, cultural exchange as a social phenomenon. Because of course in the, the South there are many moments when people uh, are not able to interact together, but music is one of those spaces where you find exception to the ideology that's out there, where people are connecting over a song, just like they might connect over uh, a meal or something like that. And to Leslie Riddle's legacy opens up the idea of the Carter family's music as not just being a uh, Anglo-American white phenomenon of Southern culture, but it's a reflection of a shared culture to know that they were influenced by a much more diverse culture on the back end. That's something that I think is a powerful legacy that we can all uh, appreciate in the end. Leslie eventually returned to Western North Carolina where he passed away in July of 1979. He was laid to rest near his hometown of Burnsville. Today, this humble and Christian working man is recognized annually at the local Riddle Fest, where members of the Carter and Riddle families gather and reflect on the life and times of these major cultural figures.